couple comments about Western Michigan. Uh, champion efforts, a much better performance on offense still. Uh, we had uh, about five, I want to say at least six underthrown deep balls, which is very uncharacteristic of our quarterbacks, and that's something that we're going to work extremely the good, work extremely hard on. The good thing is that we uh, uh, stretched the field. I mean, we're behind, uh, behind them. Every one of those times we're behind them, we're underthrown. Uh, but the uh, offense line played much better. Perimeter blocking was much better. Uh, wide receivers who graded a champion were Michael Thomas and Corey Smith. Corey Smith played really hard on special teams as well. Running backs consistently, Zeke is as, as good as there is. Um, also had a hit city as far as a great effort uh, blocking downfield, uh, but he, um, he graded out 90%, playing at a very high level. Offensive line, we had three champions, Jacoby Boren, Billy Price, and Taylor Decker. And the first time champion is Marcus Ball. And he's starting to get some uh, more playing time. Uh, Co-players of the game were Curtis Samuel, who was dynamic, and Pat Elfline, who played one of his better games um, as player of the game. On defense, not as many champions. Um, high expectations in, in that regard. We're a little bit disappointed in the overall performance. Uh, they hit some uh, very well-thrown balls on us. Uh, and we just have to play a little better. Champions were Joey Bosa. Uh, player of the game was Adolphus Washington. And we had two honorable mention guys, uh, Josh Perry and Gary on. But uh, obviously uh, need to have more champion efforts on defense. So Big Ten uh, season starts this week on the road at Indiana. Uh, renewed focus as uh, the ultimate goal is to compete uh, for a championship in November. And that uh, is, comes to fruition this week. So I'll answer any questions for you. Yeah, Coach, uh, three years ago you went to Indiana your, your first season, gave up 49 points on, on defense. How much, how different is this defense from that year? How much do you remember from that game? Uh, that was one of the few times I've ever seen a defense quit playing hard, and that's that was a problem. That was a program changer. That was, a, you know, mistakes are one thing, but when I saw what I saw, that, 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 was, a, that was not a good uh, moment. Uh, I remember it very well. And, uh, I think we're up by three or four scores, and they just came back, recovered an onside kick, and so that was a that was a, a game changer as far as how we approach. Uh, if you don't play hard, you're not going to play. Second row left, Ari. Coach, you um, have uh, 2016 recruiting class is almost full, and 2017 is halfway full at this point. I was wondering, how does your game day throughout the season change if you have far less official visitors than usual? Uh, like if you have a game that you don't have a ton of visitors at. I mean, is it, is it well, Saturday's good? tough. Sunday's all. Sunday's the hard day. Saturday, you know, because we don't change much. We uh, maybe after the game go hook up with them afterwards. But a lot of times they don't. The last people they want to see is us. They want to go out with the players and and uh, and just be around the team. Uh, but Sundays where if we have three or four, it's it's terrible. It's you're, you're meeting with the guys all day long instead of working on your next opponent. So that's something we've always addressed. And we just I want to say we had to cut one or two this year but so it's it's the uh, I would imagine Penn State and Michigan State you would see some big crowds coming for that one you don't have as many coming through for as many games as you usually do is it easier for you guys is it are there benefits for on the field you know for your, your team and do you like get up for games more when there's some big time guys on the sideline usually I have no idea I was just trying to get a first down and Make sure we execute our punt and kick off and all that. So that, I, I think I'm not trying to be a smart elk, but uh, I, until you said it, I haven't really thought about it. We're used to having a couple guys, and the big games you usually get a handful of guys, and and you have to deal with it and and uh, do the best you can. But Saturday is not the day that's a problem. Saturday you go about your business. They might have dinner with your hotel, and that's it. Sunday is the day that transition. It's completely different when you have four or five, especially if you have four or five. And I've had like five. Even seven guys visit, and your your whole day is shot, and you, you, you know it just bleeds into Monday, then Tuesday, so you get behind a little bit. But that's part of the business, especially if you want to showcase your stadium, you know. And that's we try to do that, especially from out of towners. Front row middle, Dave. Coach Cardell looked locked in on, on a lot of the intermediate routes. He was really throwing some darts out there, but he underthrew a lot of deep balls. Obviously, as you broke down the film, as you 
have conversed with him? Like, what are you telling him? You tell him to kind of just cut it loose, or what are you telling Cardiel? Well, he didn't. Do? Fundamentally, he wasn't sound. You know, fundamentally, he wasn't transition. You know, the weight transfer to back to front, uh, dragging his back leg, and that's you know Tim Beck, and, and they'll work at it. Uh, and great, and then JT on a three one two, and uh, JT, if you remember, early last year had struggled with that, and then he started throwing beautiful deep balls. So it's just something got to work on, and. Uh, uh, but you could see, that certainly not arm strength. It's just the fundamental flaw of not being able to weight transfer and driving the ball. Because he threw, you know, he, he had one of his better days throwing now. When the, the underneath, the two minute drill, some of those were just rocket shots he was throwing and very aggressive and you know, fundamentally right on it. So deep balls, we, and it was alarming, right? It was, I want to say at least six. I should have that number for you, but at least six balls that, you know, that was a 518 yard day. Those are those days, if you hit those, that, it's a big day. Tim Beck having more responsibilities up in the press box. Are you comfortable with that? How, how do you feel like that went? Went much better. Yeah, I think uh, Tim's just transitioning, and, and I knew what happened. And uh, uh, but uh, Ed, I thought did a really good job. And, and uh, uh, you know, the thing I always keep in mind is, you know, when I had Dan Mullen, Dan Mullen always had Steve Adazio. When I had uh, Tom Herman, Tom Herman always had uh, Ed Warner. And now Ed's got to have uh, Tim. And Tim, Tim's doing a fine job. It just uh, just can, you know, anytime there's fluidity on your staff, it just you need more consistency. <clears throat> Coach, at this point in the season, how much are you trying to react to what the defenses give you as opposed to imposing your own will? And is that something that's constant from season to season, or does it change with your personnel? Uh, very good question. Early in the season, you're always, and, and bowl games, you're always a little bit on your heels to start the game to see what's new. Uh, this time of year, you start to transition because teams are going to play. You can't really change your defense. Sometimes, if there's a bye week, that you know you have to be on guard. Uh, you know, Western played pretty much what we thought they would play—a little more zone coverage than you know they were an 80% man team and they were about 10% man against us. So, we, but uh, as far as the front and everything, there wasn't much of a transition. So, and we made a decision last week. We went with a lot of tempo, a lot of speed to try to get clean defenses, and and it was worked pretty good. Indiana. I I think it's still using their 3-4 defense. Is that, is that? No, their first game they did. In the last three games, they are all 4-3. So uh, first game, they, they had uh, some difficulties in their first game, but they've, they've gone all to 4-3 uh, defense the last three games. Do you feel like you have that solved, though, whatever uh, the issue was? Never have a solved. Okay. Never. And when a coach says, there's John Cooper in the back. When, is that right, John? When a coach says it's, he has a solve, that's a problem because that's a joke. No, we don't. We do not have it solved. Front row right, Austin. Or Michael Thomas has shown a pretty remarkable ability to get his feet down in bounds and some difficult throws. I don't know if that'd be too difficult to rank him, but where is that ability to stack up with some other guys you've had? Yeah, our receiver coach will probably take credit for that, but he's he's outstanding at it. He uh, uh, he does a good job. He does it in practice. You know, he has a very good uh, awareness of where the field is, where he's at, and. Uh, He's playing at a very high level. You were a receivers coach. Maybe you want to take credit for it. But are, there, are there drills that you can do, or is that just something that he has to come by naturally? Yeah, there's drills, but it's more uh, we, we move around the field quite often. We spend a lot of time in the red zone. And so uh, you know he knows that position of the field very well. And uh, if you notice, he's usually our boundary receiver, so he's very accustomed to that position. Uh, but there's also a lot of it's on him, because I have other guys that just happen to be out of bounds a lot. He's very uh, aware where the end, end line is. Far left, Matt. Um, I want to ask you about Zeke. He's had three hurdles over guys in two weeks. Um, how do you react when you see him do that? Do you ever like worry, God, you're going to hurt yourself? Well, one would have been a legit Sports Center play if we would have finished the block by the wideout. It was out. I mean, that was a great, great uh, job by Zeke. Zeke is playing. You know, it's disappointing we don't have enough hits for him yet because he's playing. At a very high level, he's tough. He's playing hard without the ball, and uh, you know the expectation. I guess after last year, what's wrong? You know, why aren't they using Zeke? What's you know? I get that question as well. What's what's wrong with Zeke? I think what's wrong with Zeke? Zeke's playing fantastic, um, but a lot of his big hits last year were the perimeter block. It was a little bit better. This week was a, one of our better ones. Uh, it's still not to the degree it was last year. I want to ask you quick the end of half sequence uh, where the, with the run off at the end. Is yeah. there anything? From a coaching standpoint, you talked to Cardale about because oh, yeah. he, well, he had to get rid of the ball, otherwise the half's over too. But what, 
What did you see? No, in those situations, and, and uh, we, we actually covered in meeting time yesterday, um, there, we had two plays, and we were, we were being a little aggressive at the end there to take one more shot. And if it's not there, throw it away immediately. And he hung on it too long. It wasn't there. Throw it away. And uh, it was a correct call. He was in the pocket. And uh, so I mean, that was a situation. I'm glad it came up. It's something we've covered before on the practice field. And the, to answer your question, the coaching is we're going to take a shot. I think it was eight seconds left. Throw the, take the shot. If it's not there, burn it, kick the field goal, and get out of there. But other, other than that part of the drive, I thought he did very well. The receivers, protection, quarterback, I was right down the field. From her right, Jim. Yeah, Urban, uh, a couple of things. Number one, Joel Hill, I think, ran ran off, uh, ran on the field with the rose in his hand last last Michigan game, and a lot of people thought that was the last game he decided to come back. What what do you? Uh, I don't know. What did it about him stands out as far as you're concerned? Uh, You've seemed to have liked him his whole career here. Yeah, he's one of my favorite players. He's a guy that uh, loves Ohio State. He's one of the toughest guys on the team. He's a guy that uh, is an inspiration, pushes guys, grind guys. In the offseason, he's one of Coach Mick's favorite guys. So, you know, I believe he should coach someday. Uh, he knows how I feel about that. Uh, he certainly has a position here if he wants it. That's how strong we've, everyone feels about him here. The other thing, uh, previous game, y'all, I'm trying to remember two or three passes, maybe Max y'all threw over the middle or into the inter intermediate middle. Saturday, y'all threw a lot there and stuff. Did y'all address that, in this, or is it just what the defense presented? Uh, what was sort of behind that? Two. Uh, it, it's all. Whenever you see that, Tim, it's what the defense presents itself. You know, someone I hear people say, "Throw it down the middle." Like, well, if the middle's covered, you're not going to throw it down the middle. Uh, they played a quarters defense, which exposed the middle of the field, and we were much uh, more aggressive. Uh, with we threw the ball 33 times and should have actually thrown it more and. Um, Threw for 288, and that was a 300. Should have been a 350-yard day. That's what I was gonna say. You you talked all week about being more aggressive and stuff. Did you see that? Saturday? Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. What, and what does that mean to you? Does it mean throwing more, or what does it mean? More well, it means I challenged the the offensive skill to go do their jobs, and they played pretty well. You know, it wasn't perfect, and obviously when you have that many underthrown passes, that's you know, I guess if you had to pick your evils, if you are not executing down the field throws because your guys can't get open, that's a that's a major problem. That's a re that's a recruiting error, uh, effort error, or something, and that that wasn't the problem. Underthrown balls are just a matter, of, especially if you can do it, just a matter of execution. Front row left, Doug. Urban, when you have a team that was playing so well, I guess I'm talking offensively at the end of last year. I know every year is a new season, but. How much do you sort of expect there to be some carryover when you do have a lot of guys back, or, or do you just really think <coughs> each year is completely new, or when you have veterans, do you think, oh yeah, we kind of got this, we can just keep rolling? Oh, I, I would expect you know a little bit better. Well, our first game was pretty good, pretty high end execution. Uh, the, we we had two, I think two uh, games that we didn't perform very well offensively, and and that happens. That's how. I, if there's a critique on our offense over the last 13, 14 years, whatever it's been, it's the early in the season funk that you're you're in sometimes, and a lot of it's because of the maybe new defenses or the, you take a couple of key players out of that lineup for us. Jeff Hireman was a real guy. Uh, you take Daryl Baldwin out of line, and there's there, there's a little bit of growing pains. So I would end, I would have expected us to play a little bit better, but I hope no one here uh, felt a sense of panic. It's normal growing pains for. Early in 2015. And you talked about, you just mentioned Dan Mullen and Tom and the offensive coordinators you've had in your career. I don't know if you can just sort of maybe explain a little more. As an offensive coach, how important still is that offensive coordinator in what you're doing? And maybe if you can compare it to the defensive side of the ball. I think that's, that's important to understand it. When we say offense coordinator here, it's coordinating an offense that's in. Does that make sense? Where if you hire someone and say, okay, you're bring your system, let's take two years, the system's here, it's, and the system's not going anywhere. So we're, we hire people to coach our system. And it's not a uh, dictatorship where this is the way we're doing it. No, this is the way we've done it, and this is the way we're going to make it better. And so it's a very unique situation here. You know, we don't hire coordinators to come in and say, hey, let's Let's enhance it and make it better. And that's where I think uh, Tom was so valuable. Tom added a lot of elements. Ed Warner has been phenomenal uh, enhancing as the line coach co-coordinator. And Tim Beck is slowly bringing his, you know, his 
added to make it better. So it's much different here than, you know, when you hear when coaches make transitional coordinator changes a lot of times and you see a mess. When you see three offense coordinators that come in and bring their own systems, that's why they say that darn quarterback is playing bad. The quarterback's playing bad. They have three different systems in three years. The good thing about JT and Cardell, they've been in the same, they're not, it's not changing. Is that ever hard in hiring guys? Are there some yeah. guys who would want to come in, like when you were hiring Tim Beck? Are there some guys maybe who would have taken that job and said, no, I want to I think people know. I, I, that's a good, I think when I, I, I really thought about it back in, uh, whenever I was hired here, 2012, about bringing in, I mean, some guys were calling me, and I was like, you know, very good coaches. And I thought, but that's, that's not who we're going to be. You know, we're, here's what we're going to do. And that's when I put the laser lights on Tom, because I thought he'd be the perfect guy. This is related a little bit to Doug's first question. The motto inside there is the grind. Um, a lot of people, and for you and coaches, it's always a grind. So maybe you're not the best person to answer it. But does it feel like more of a grind this year than maybe you thought it might? Oh, I, I imagine you're leading to that the fact that there's expectations are so high. I think that's natural. Yeah, if I can tell you, tell you no, but not, it, I think so. I think you know you're fresh. You're you're winning just pretty soundly, playing pretty good, and expectation level. You know you say, well, back when you played Alabama, back when you played, I know, but this is a different team, different time, and uh, that's where I'm really trying not to let that happen. And that's a lot of it's on me, you know, and I, I can't let it become that. I, I can tell you, victory meals are great. Our kids, when someone said we've had, I can't remember how many out of how many victory meals, and uh, they're still very good. And we still want to continue having them. So I, I'm not going to let that. And that's my I'm watching that very closely. And a question about Raekwon. He had 16 tackles. After the game, he said, well, I missed four. Um, where is he in his development right now? Yeah, we uh, interior of our defense, uh, you know, we're exposed a little bit. And so that's something that's going to be a lot of our emphasis right now. We had man coverage, a couple. That quarterback threw some great balls, uh, some great ball, back shoulder throws, and then that deep ball to that two really good receivers that are, are Michigan State, I guess, talked to our coaches and, and, and uh, the Western Michigan group. That kid's going to be playing on the tall one, 84, I think his number was. It's a very good player, and the other guy's a very good player. And uh, they made some good throws and caught some balls on us. That wasn't as alarming as the fact that you saw the uh, running back separate our defense a couple times. And that's oh, very happy, yeah. And uh, I think it's more the defensive interior players along with the linebackers. We just have to get a little bit better.